Hi guys and welcome to the next video. In this one we will crush the CSS typography course in this getting more advanced with design module. So we have a lesson section with a bunch of exercises. Then we have a project and at the end we have quiz like usual. And now let's get started with the first exercise in the lesson section. So typography, CSS typography. In this lesson, we will focus on typography, the art of arranging text on a page. In particular, we will look at how to style fonts with CSS to make them legible and appealing and how to add external fonts to your web pages. Some of the most important information a user will see on a web page will be textual. Styling text to make page content accessible and engaging can significantly improve user experience. Let's begin. So making your typography engaging can significantly improve your UI on the page. In the browser, we have a blog site with fonts of different sizes. Okay. And styles. In the following exercise, we will learn how to manipulate fonts to create engaging interfaces. Once you have an idea of the general layout of the page, proceed to the next exercise. Okay, this is just the introduction lesson to this whole typography module. And now let's continue to the next exercise. Let's see how many exercises we have. Okay, we have 18 and this is just the review. Okay, font family. If you have ever used a formatted word processor, chances are that you probably also used a feature that allowed you change the type of font you were typing in. The phrase type of font refers to the technical term typeface or font family. To change the typeface of text on your web page, you can use the font family property. This is the CSS property for font family manipulation. In the example above, the font family for all main heading elements has been set to Garamond. When setting typefaces on a web page, keep the following points in mind. Let's see. The font specified in a style sheet must be installed on a user computer in order to that font to display when a user visits the web page. We will learn how to work around this issue in a later exercise. You will usually include the Google fonts or you can download those Google fonts locally and then include them in your web page. You have probably noticed that we haven't been specifying a typeface in previous exercises of this course. How exactly does the browser know what typeface to use when displaying the web page? Because the default typeface for many browsers is Times New Roman. You may be familiar with this typeface if you have ever used a formatted word processor. And let's see what is the font family of this text right here. So you open the dev tools, then go to computed, then go down there. And here is the font family. Okay, I just show you the trick, how you can inspect the specific piece of text. You may be familiar with this typeface if you have ever used a formatted word processor. It is a good practice to limit the number of typefaces used on a web page to two or three. When the name of a typeface consists of more than one word, it must be enclosed in double quotes. Otherwise, it will not be recognized like so. So like this example right here. Instructions in style.css change the font family of h1 and h2 elements to Georgia. So h1, I guess we don't have a selector for h1s. 
No, we don't. And now let's add a selector for H1 and set font family property Georgia. And let's do the same thing for the H2. But you can do this way. So multiple selector. And now they both have font family of Georgia. Update our code. Okay. And you can see that the font family is now changed. Spec element. Select computed tab. Go down there and see rendered fonts Georgia. Next, change the font family of the paragraph to Helvetica. So here is the paragraph the selector. Okay. Now let's inspect the paragraph elements. So P elements, computed tab, render fonts, Helvetica. Okay, now let's proceed to the next exercise. In this one, we will learn about font weight, another CSS property. You have probably noticed bold text in websites you use, especially in news or text heavy sites. It is common to bold important headings or keywords. In CSS, we can style bold text with the font weight property. If we want to bold text in a web page, we can set the font weight to bold. Like in this example right here, if we want to ensure that text is not bold, we can set the font family to normal. So this is normal font weight or default font weight. By default, the font weight of most text elements is set to normal. Some elements like headers have built-in bold styling. A good approach is to check to see if the text element has any default styling and use the font weight property accordingly. Okay, taking a look at the web page in the browser, you will notice a banner section, the blue section right below the navigation menu. So right here in style.css in the banner section of the style sheets, set the font weight of the paragraph within class banner to bold. You will notice that the letters in the paragraph in the web page Taken. Let's find the banner P selector. So font weight should be bold. You can also do the number type. So 700 is referencing to bold. But let's use bold for now. And now this paragraph text is bolded let's proceed to the next one font weight second exercise the font weight property can also be assigned a number value to style text on a numeric scale ranging from 100 to 900 valid values are multiples of 100 within this range such as 200 or 500 when using numeric weights, there are a number of default font weights that we can use. 400 is the default font weight of most text. And this also can be referenced as normal keyword value. Then 700 signifies a bold font weight. And then we have 300 that signifies a light font weight. Let's take a look at an example of how numeric fonts are used. Let's see. Header selector, font weight 800, then footer selector, font weight 200. Here the header would appear as a deep bold, while the footer would appear rather light. It is important to know that not all fonts can be assigned a numeric font weight, you can look up the font you are using to see which font weight values are available. Let's see the instructions. The header section of the web page, so this right here, is where the navigation menu is. And this is the navigation menu. 
it lives at the very top of the page. In style.css file, in the header section, set the font weight of the element with class header to 900. You will notice the list elements in the navigation ticket. Let's find the header selector, so right here. And let's set the font weight property to 900. And let's update our page. And as you can see, the font for the menu items is thicker now. Let's proceed to the next exercise. In this one, we will learn about font style. You can also italicize text with the font style property. The italic value. So here is the example font style CSS property with italic value. The italic value causes text to appear in italics. The font style property also has a normal value, which is the default value. In the instructions, we have the web page features three sections, Germond, Helvetica and Space Mono. Each of these sections includes a line with the name of the font creator, such as Claude Germond. Let's italicize the creator's name on each of these cards in style.css in the font card section. Set the font style of font card creator to italic. Let's find that CSS selector. So here is the selector and now let's set the font style property to italic. Refresh the page, update our code, and as you can see, the text is now italicized. And let's proceed to the next exercise. This one is called word spacing. Let's see about that. You can also increase the spacing between words in a body of text, technically known as word spacing. To do so, you can use the word spacing property. Here is the property. Note that it is good to use M values in this case. Let's open this page. This is the section about M's. I'll leave you the link to this page in the description of this video, of course, because M is dynamic for word spacing. It sets the spacing based on the size of the font. In the example above, the word spacing is set to 0.3 M's. The default amount of space between words is usually 0.25 ms and can be set with the value normal. If you provide a value for word spacing that is not normal, then the value you provide is added to the default spacing. Therefore, since the word spacing is set to 0.3 ms, your H1 elements get a total of 0.55 ms word spacing when rendered. It is not common to increase the spacing between words, but it may help enhance the readability of bolded or enlarged text. And now let's see the instructions in style.css set the word spacing of the P elements to 1.5 M's. And now let's set the word spacing property to 0.5 M's. Update our code and let's see the changes. And this is pretty ugly, but they just wanted to show us how we can manipulate the word spacing. So this is the space between each word. Okay, let's proceed to the next exercise. This one is called letter spacing and I think this one is used more often than the previous one. You have learned how to increase the spacing between lines of text and words, but it is possible to get even more detailed increasing the spacing between individual letters. The technical term for adjusting the spacing between letters is called tracking. Tracking can be adjusted with the letter spacing property in CSS and here is the property like word spacing. 
it is not common to increase the tracking in text, but sometimes it enhances the readability of uppercase text. Style.css set the letter spacing of the H2 elements to 0 0.02 M's. So letter spacing 0.02 M's. And let's see, I think this is the H2 element. Yep. We increased letter spacing. Let's increase this a little bit more so you can see the actual spacing. And now you can notice the letter spacing much better. Okay. Let's proceed to the next exercise, text transformation. Text can also be styled to appear in either all uppercase or lowercase with the text transform property. Here is the CSS property. The code in the example above formats all H1 elements to, upper, to appear in uppercase, regardless of the case used for the heading within the HTML code. Alternatively, the lowercase value could be used to format text in all lowercase letters. Since text can be directly typed in all uppercase or, or lowercase within an HTML file, what is the point of a CSS rule that allows you to format letter case? Depending on the type of content a web page displays, it may make sense to always style a specific element in all uppercase or lowercase letters. For example, a website that reports breaking news may decide to format all H1 heading elements such that they always appear in all uppercase, as in the example above. It would also avoid uppercase text in the HTML file, which could make code difficult to read. In style.css, transform the text in the main heading, so H1, and let's create the only h1 selector and let's make the text of h1 heading all uppercase let me fix that and let's update our code let's find the h1 And I think we don't have any H1. We set the text transform for the H1s to uppercase, but we don't have any H1 element on the page. Not sure why they didn't include one, so we can see how uppercase looks, but let's proceed to the next exercise. This one is about text alignment. No matter how much styling is applied to text, typeface, size, weight, etc., text always appears on the left side of the browser. To move or align text, we can use the text align property. Here is the property. The text align property can be set to one of the following three values. So left aligns text to the left hand side of the browser, center. This one centers text and right aligns text to the right hand side of the browser. Later in the course, you will learn exactly how the browser positions HTML elements by default, which will help you understand how the browser aligns text since align is a relative term. For now, it is enough to know that text can be moved to the left, center or right side of the page. Okay, in style.css, set the text align property of the main heading h1 so that it appears on the left side. So, text align, if you want it to be on the left side, then use left value. On a second thought, the heading looks better in the center. Reset the heading so that it is aligned to the center. Okay, let's modify it but still we don't have any H1. 
let's go and copy this and use h2 element instead of h1 so we can actually see the uppercase and now you can see how it looks when it is uppercase and it is also aligned center let's proceed to the next exercise this one is called line height anatomy let's learn about line height another property that we can set for text is line height this property modifies leading of text the diagram to the right helps illustrate exactly what the term leading and line height mean let's see so you have one line of the text then you have the second line so font size this is the line height so it is measured from the bottom of the text on one line to the bottom of the text on the next line and this is the actual font size so this is the bottom this is the top of the text and this is the leading so leading is basically the remaining space so line height minus font size space equal to leading space okay let's proceed line height we often modify line height to make text on a web page easier to read when text is styled to appear larger the vertical spacing between lines of text can decrease creating text that is difficult to read particularly in paragraphs we can use the line height property to set how tall we want the line containing our text to be regardless of the height of the text line heights can take one of several several values a unitless number such as 1.2 this number is an absolute value that will compute the line height as a ratio of the font size a number specified by unit such as 12 pixels this number can be any valid CSS unit, such as pixels, percents, amps, or rems. Generally, the unitless ratio value is the preferred method since it is responsive and based exclusively on the current font size. In other words, if we change the font size, a unitless line height would automatically readjust, whereas the pixel value would remain static. Okay, let's change the line height of the text within the banner. In style.css, set the line height of the paragraph element within the banner class to 1.4. Let's find that selector. So right here, line height 1.4. Okay. Let's run our code and see the difference. And here is the paragraph, the banner element. And as you can see, now we have much space between the text lines. So this space right here. And let me delete that word spacing. It makes our page really ugly. And now it is much better visibility is much better now and let me increase to 1.5 see the difference and now we have even more space between the text lines so that's line height now let's proceed to the next one serif and sans serif you have learned a lot of properties to modify text on a web page. In the next exercise, you will set some text to be serif and some text to be sans serif. What exactly do these words mean? So first we have serif, fonts that have extra details on the ends of each letter. Examples include fonts like Times New Roman or Georgia among others. Sans serif. Fonts that do not have extra details on the ends of each letter. Instead, letters have straight, flat edges like Arial or Helvetica. And here you can see the difference between serif and sans serif. You notice how the letter ends are different. Here we have 
a flat edge so straight flat edge and here we don't have that notice the difference between serif fonts and sans serif fonts in the diagram to the right when you are done proceed to the next exercise and now let's proceed to the next one fallback fonts what happens when a style sheet requires a font that is not installed on a user's computer most computers have a small set of typefaces pre-installed this small set includes serif fonts like times new roman and sans serif fonts like arial these pre-installed fonts serve as fallback fonts if the style sheet specifies a font which is not installed on a user's computer to use fallback fonts the following syntax is required so first you specify primary font and then you have the second one if you don't have this one pre-installed then it will fall back to this one and if you don't have this one then it will fall back just to serif family and pick any serif you have the css rule above says use the garamond font for all h1 elements on the web page so right here if garamond is not available use the times font so this one if garamond and times are not available use any serif font pre-installed on the user's computer so right here the fonts specified after garamond are the fallback fonts times and serif in this example fallback fonts help ensure a consistent experience for the diverse audience of users that visit a site below the banner the web page is made of three main font sections serif sans serif and monospace each of these sections shows an example font garamond helvetica and space mono so we have garamond helvetica and space mono we will focus on styling the garamond section here in style.css let me scroll to garamond section in the font card section let's find that create the selector garamond sample text so this selector let's find that add styles for the garamond so right here okay using the selector you just created set the font to garamond and add serif as a fallback so font family garamond and serif as fallback in style.css below the last selector you made create the selector helvetica sample text so right here and now using the selector you just created set the font to helvetica and add sans serif as a fallback so font family helvetica and sans serif as a fallback family okay let me inspect the text and see if it is using the right font family so this one isn't using the garamond i think i don't have that one pre-installed on my machine but i'm pretty sure that i have helvetica so let's inspect this one and here we are using helvetica so everything should be fine but let's proceed to the next one so let's learn about linking fonts part one with the number of fonts available with modern typography it is unrealistic to expect users to have all fonts installed on their computers and you saw for example that i don't have garamond installed 
New fonts are often centralized in directories made available for public use. We refer to these fonts as non-user fonts. The most popular is Google Fonts, of course. I'll leave you the link to this page, of course, so you can explore and browse font families. The Google Fonts is one such directory of thousands of open source fonts available for free use. Google Fonts gives us a way to retrieve the link for a single font, multiple fonts or multiple fonts with the font weight and font style properties predefined. We will show you where to add this link in the next exercise. View the video in this exercise. The video demonstrates how to retrieve the link for a single font, multiple fonts and multiple fonts of various numeric font weights and font styles. Once you have viewed, viewed the video, repeat these steps in the browser on your desktop computer selecting the space mono font specifying the regular 400 and bold 700 font weights. When you are ready, click next to continue. And let's just play the video. Okay, so basically go to Google Fonts. They are using the Leto font family in the example. Okay, now they are adding the specific font weights. And here you can filter the search. So they are just searching for serif font fonts. And this is the link you should copy in the head section of your HTML page. And let's see, selecting space mono, regular 400 and bold 700. So just go to Google fonts in search type space mono. Here is the font family. Open that. Then you have all available font weights. This one only has a regular, regular italic, of course, bold and bold italic. So they want us to select 400 and 700. So 400 stands for regular, 700 stands for bold. And then on the right side, you have the link that you should copy and paste in the head section of your HTML page. And here is the CSS font family property you should use for this font family. So space mono and mono space as the fallback. And now let's proceed to the next one, linking fonts, second part. When we have the link to the font and the styles of our choice, we can add the font to the head section of the HTML document using the link tag and the href property. Let's take a look at a few examples. A single linked font using Open Sans as an example. Okay, head section, of course, then the link you copy from the Google Fonts page multiple linked fonts using the OpenSense and Playfair display fonts as an example. So same thing, just we have multiple fonts. So the link path is different, of course, multiple linked fonts along with weights and styles. Here OpenSense has font weights of 400, 700 and 700 I, which stands for italic, while Playfair display has font weights of 400, 700 and 900 I and here is the link. So in in the link URL, you can actually see what font family you are including and what font weights you are including. Once a font is linked, we can create CSS selectors to target elements just as we do with other fonts. In the previous exercise, you surface the link to the space mono font, specifying both the normal and bold font weights. In index.html, include this font in the project using the link tag. Let me go there. 
just copy the link we have selected regular and bold already go to index and let's go right here before the CSS run our code okay go back to CSS install the CSS in the font card section create the selector so this one let's go down there okay using the selector you just created set the font like i told you here you can copy the example property css font family property for the specific font family in this one in this case it is space mono so space mono as the primary one and mono space as the fallback update our code and now let's go there and see so here is the space mono let's inspect the element computed tab down there rendered fonts space mono so everything is okay let's proceed to the next exercise in this one let's learn about font face part one there are other ways to link non-user fonts that don't require the use of the link tag in the HTML document. CSS offers a way to import fonts directly into style sheets with the font face property. To load fonts with the font face property, instead of using the fonts link in the HTML document, enter the link into the URL bar in the browser. The browser will load the CSS rules you will need to focus on the rules that are directly labeled as Latin. Some of the Latin rules are on separate lines. You will need each of these. Copy each of the CSS rules labeled Latin and paste the rules from the browser to the top of style.css. It is important to stress the need to copy the font face rules to the top of the style sheet for the font to load correctly in the project so for the font to load before everything else so you can actually use them instructions view the video in this exercise the video demonstrates how to enter the space mono font link you previously retrieved into the browser the browser in turn displays the rules you will use for the font once you have viewed the video, repeat these steps in the browser on your desktop computer with link for the space mono font with normal 400 and bold 700 font weights. You can find the direct link to the font here. Once your desktop browser displays the rules, click next to continue. And let's see the video. So instead of copying the link to your head section, the HTML page, you paste the URL of the link to the browser and then you can copy all the font face rules, but we will need just the Latin font face. So let me go there and let me show you how we can do this in the href attribute go there and copy the link or, or you can just click go to and now we open it the font face rules okay let's go back let's proceed to the next one and now we will use that font rules we can then use the fonts in the style sheets as you would use any other font let's practice loading an external font in our style sheets using the font face property and using the font to style our page in index.html remove the link to the space mono font that you have added in the previous exercise so let's delete this run our code now this shouldn't be space mono and it isn't i already can see that so it is not 
now add this same font to style that CSS using the font face rule rules labeled Latin. So we open the page in the previous exercise. Now let's copy the font face. So styles.css at the top. Don't forget before everything. Recall that in order to do this, we use the same CSS rules returned in the browser for the space mono font and copy the Latin font face rules to the top of the style sheet. If you need help retrieving the link for the appropriate font, click here. Once you add the font, you will notice that element style in the space mono font retain the correct font styling. Let's update our code. And I forgot to add the second rule for the bold font weight and go there and copy that one too. Now update our code. Everything is fine, of course. And let's go there, inspect the element, computed, space mono, font weight 900. This one is also space mono, space mono and font weight 400. Okay, let's proceed to the next exercise. This one is called font face part three. While Google fonts and other resources can broaden font selection, you may wish to use an entirely different font or abstain from using a font from an external service. We can modify our font face rules to use local font files as well. We can supply the user with the desired font family and host it along with our site instead of depending on a different site. Here is the example. Here you will notice the main difference is the use of a relative file path instead of a web URL. So right here we add a format for each file to specify which font to use. Here is the format. Different browsers support different font types, so providing multiple font file options will support more browsers. As of now, WOFF2 appears to be the way of the future due to greatly reduced file sizes and improved performance, but many browsers still don't support it. There are lots of great resources to find fonts to use locally, such as Font Squirrel. And I'll leave you the link to this page, of course, in the description of the video. So you can go there and browse the font families. Let's see the instructions for the exercise. In the fonts directory, you will notice that we have added several local font files. Let's change the typography of the banner using local font files. If you open up the fonts directory, so right here, Using the file navigator in the code editor, you will notice that we have added local font files, Glego Regular and Glego Bold. At the top of style.css, create a selector using the font face property and give it the font family of Glego. Okay, let's close that. Let's copy the example as a reference. Okay. So font family. Lego. And that's it for now. Let's delete these right now. Update our code. Okay. Within the font face rule add a source attribute with the relative path of the file glego regular ttf and a format of true type make sure to include this path in the url parentheses let's copy this as a reference so yep we have so style not sure i think we need to go up in a folder hierarchy first one level and then go to fonts and 
then include the Lego regular dot ptf and format is true type Okay, this should be fine, I think. Yeah, using the selector that uh, gets the paragraph nested within the banner class, add the font family, Lego, and a font size of 20 pixels. Let's find the selector. So banner, paragraph, font family, Lego. I forgot to add font size and we got the error did you add a font family property with the value Lego to the banner p selector yep we did just that so font family Lego font size 20 pixels here is the family name. I'm not sure why this is not working. Oh, two O's instead of two E's. And now it is working. Inspect the element, computed, and the rendered font family is Lego. Everything is fine now. And I think this font family is pretty nice. Let's proceed to the next exercise. And in this one, we will just go over everything we did so far in this CSS typography module. Great job, you learn how to style an important aspect of the user experience, typography. Let's review what you have learned so far. Typography is the art of arranging text on a page. Text can appear in any number of weights with the font weight property. Text can appear in italics with the font style property. The vertical spacing between lines of text can be modified with the line height property. Serif fonts have extra details on the ends of each letter. Sans serif fonts do not. Fallback fonts are used when a certain font is not installed, installed on a user's computer. The Google Fonts provides free fonts that can be used in an HTML file with the link tag or the font face property. Local fonts can be added to a document with the font face property and the path to the font's source. The word spacing property changes how far apart individual words are. The letter spacing property changes how far apart individual letters are and the text align property changes the horizontal alignment of text. Okay, we completed all the exercises in the lesson section. Now let's proceed to the project section. And the project is called typography. Eva Conlevy is a novelist who has been writing about her travels for nearly two decades. Before the launch of her new novel, Tide Blade, which features the stories of real-life characters in Morocco, the author wants to spurs up her professional website. You will modify the typography on her site, changing the size, style and font families to make the page easier to read. Using your understanding of typography, help Eva Conlevy improve the readability of her site for her readers. And let's start with the project. We have nine tasks in total. Okay, let's start with the first task. The header section of Eva Conlevy's site contains the author's name along with the text, travels, fiction and contact. So right here, change the font weight of the header so that the text appears bold. Okay, header selector, font weight, change to bold. 
or you can go ahead and use number value so 700 for the bold and the text is bolded now moving down the page the banner section contains a stunning image two blocks of text an h2 tag with the text des 2000 xx and an h1 tag with the text morocco so right here give the h2 tag a font weight of 500 and the h1 tag a font weight of 900 so under the banner first let's go there and change the h2 under the banner so update the font to weight property of that heading element to 500 and font weight property of the h1 under the banner element to 900 update our code and they are bolder now after reviewing the project the author suggests that the line height seems a bit off and needs to be altered throughout the page work down the page and set line height of the following page elements as recommended let's copy the line height property so i don't need to type for every selector so the first one the paragraph within the journal section so let me see so right here is the journal but i'm not sure if we have journal p and it is right here so line height 1.4 then the first letter of the journal section should have a line height of 087 times the font size so journal first letter 0 0.787 this is the same as typing zero but you can omit the zero then the quote should have a line height of 1.2 times the font size okay then we have the quote 1.2 and the footer content let's find the footer selector right here should have 1.5 line height let's update our page I think this is the first letter that we updated and then we updated the footer section and this quote element and I think this is the paragraph under the journal section yeah journal paragraph okay the site currently uses common serif and sans serif fonts found on users' computers. Since the author first published the site, a number of new font libraries have created fonts that you think would be a better fit for the site. Using the Google Fonts API, add the following fonts to the index.html. Okay, so let's see. Open the Google Fonts page. Go there and we need this font family so only one font weight then this one and from this one font weight of four five and eight hundred so four hundred 500 800 and this font family too and we need a 400 and 400 italic from this one so 400 400 italic 
you may either link these fonts in a single link tag or three separate link tags. Okay, let's go there and copy the link element and paste in our index.html file in the head section of course save our code you can now use the newly added fonts from google fonts within our project moving down the page again set the font family and property as recommended set the typeface of the h2 tag in the banner section to work sans go back to the style.css so h2 under the banner element right here so work sans font family here you can find the property for each font family okay set the typeface of the h1 under the banner so h1 now to april okay set the typeface of the journal section to work sense so journal and set the typeface of the photo caption to Mary Weather. Let's find the photo caption right here. That should be okay now. H1 is changed, H2 is changed, journal section is changed. I think this is the photo caption. Let me inspect this one. Should be Merry Weather. Yep. Rendered font Merry Weather. Okay. This one is also completed. The page looks great, but you also have to account for users who may not be able to access the Google fonts. Find them several fallback fonts to use in case they are restricted from accessing fonts from a third party. Set the fallback fonts as follows. Okay, let's go up. So H2 under the banner section. This should be the fallback. So Arial and Sans Serif. H1 tag in the banner section, Sans Serif. H1 banner, sans serif, the journal section should have serif font family as the fallback instead of sans serif and the photo caption should have serif, it already has that so nothing should be changed there, update our code, ok everything is ok so far instead of linking the font from index.html you realize it would be better to import google fonts in the files directly into style sheets with the font face property use the font face property to import the fonts directly to the style sheet style sheets and remove the link tags that reference the google fonts from the index.html page okay so first let's go there in the index.html file delete the link element now go back on the google fonts page and let's open the url and let's copy the font face rules so just the latin font face rules let's go there on the top of the CSS page okay let me find the next one
Okay, that should be all. So April third phase four hundred, Meriwether four hundred, Italic, Meriwether four hundred normal, Work Suns four hundred, and Work Suns five hundred and Work Suns eight hundred. Okay, save our code. Everything stays the same. We just change how we load the fonts instead of loading the fonts in the HTML file under the head section. We load now we load the fonts directly into the CSS file using the font face rule. Looking at the page, the author suggests the page really come together if we use a specific font. Croissant one regular in the footer, the files have been downloaded and added to our project within the fonts directory, within the styles directory where our CSS files are stored. To complete the task, you need to use the font face property to make these fonts accessible in the style sheets. Name the font Croissant one. This will be a locally included font from the relative path. Let's go down there. Let's copy one of the font face rules. So the source will be different now. We don't need that one. We don't need that one too. The font family is called Crescent One. Source. Let me find so styles. Style CSS fonts. So fonts. Here is the font name. Format. Let's use true type format. And now let's update our page. Now that you have a font face rule set font family property of the footer to the newly imported font family. Let's find the footer selector. So right here, font family. Update our page and font family is changed. Let's inspect that computer tab and rendered fonts cross and one. We also need to set the fallbacks. So this is the first fallback and serif as the last fallback. Save our code, everything should be the same, yep. Okay, so we completed the project. We updated the whole page. Let's proceed to the next one. In the next one, we will complete the quiz on CSS typography. How does this CSS rule set affect H1 elements? We have a letter spacing property set to 20 pixels. None letter spacing is an invalid CSS property. No H1 elements will have 20 pixels of space between every letter and this one is the right answer of course why might a user see the times font with this css rule because he lacks the garamond font family the garamond font font is not available on the user's computer yep the following css code fails to set the typeface of the heading to courier new why because we need quotes when we have space between font family name Courier new must be enclosed in double quotation marks since it contains a space. The following HTML code links to what Google font. So Roboto. Why is it important to include web safe fallback fonts? Three fonts must be provided to font family. Nope. It is important to include web safe fallback fonts. Using web safe fonts will write any custom fonts. In the case that your custom fonts don't render, web safe fonts provide a secure secondary option, of course. How would the following CSS rule set affect paragraph elements? 
space will appear between lines of text in the P element because the container for each line is 1.5 times its default height. What does the following line of code, HTML code, do? We are importing the font family from Google Fonts. Import all fonts from Google Fonts. Nope. Set the font to laptop for link elements. Nope. Set the default font family to lot of HTML elements. Nope. And this is the right answer. Links a font file and allows you to use the lato font for font family in CSS style rules. What is the difference between serif and sans serif fonts? Serif fonts include details on the ends of letters whereas sans serif fonts do not. Sans serif fonts include details on the ends of letters, whereas serif fonts do not, and this is the right answer, of course. Which rule will make all H1 text uppercase, so text transform uppercase, of course, and 100%, everything is completed. Okay, guys, thanks for watching this CSS typography code Kedemi module we completed the whole module i hope you like it and that you learn something new when it comes to css typography